Previously on Pioneer One. We need an expert in here, someone who knows what they're talking about and quietly. Can you help us out, Doctor? My name is Jane. Here we are. She's the best you got. Given these circumstances, hell yes. Media, they seem to think that we've got Roswell Part 2 in here. You got yourself two weeks? Say so one to get off the base for a couple hours. A little difficult with the quarantine. I'm not convinced the Russians aren't hiding something. Maybe you should do a little more research before you put out a bogus cover story. Continue now with our special report on the ongoing quarantine in Calgary. One week out and there are still more questions than answers. Many of Canada's citizens are demanding that more information be released to the public. Joining me now for the Canadian Perspective is Simon Montag, blogger and political activist. Mr. Montag, you wrote a post in your blog that's been syndicated in the op-ed columns of several national and international newspapers. Are you saying that you don't believe the official story about the downed satellite from the former Soviet Union? By all appearances, it seems there's more going on here than we're being told. I don't know if it's not a satellite, but things aren't adding up. We're being kept in the dark, and it's almost certainly a result of Americans wanting to keep this secret. I'm not an expert on satellites or radiation, but the scale of the quarantine seems unwarranted given what we have been told. But the point I'm trying to make is that it should be up to Canada to decide, not the United States. For further perspective, joining us now is David Collins, speaking to us from Homeland Security Secretary Eric McClellan's office in Washington, D.C. Mr. Collins is a senior advisor to the Secretary, is that correct? Yes, that's right, Deirdre. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for taking the time. I'm sure you're very busy. I'm going to just go ahead and assume you disagree with most of what Mr. Montag has expressed. Yes, Deirdre, I strongly disagree. Strongly disagree. Of course, Mr. Montag is entitled to his opinion, but there's a difference between an opinion and an informed opinion. Oh, well, of Mr. course, Montag, I'm sure that you'll you... you'll get a chance to respond. There are radiation concerns, and the quarantine is a precautionary measure. Perhaps overcautious, but we'd rather err on the side of public safety. And I'm sure your viewers would agree. Mr. Montag? I hear a lot of fear-mongering out there about radiation and national emergencies, but it's diverting us from the main issues here. Let me ask you, sir, why was the debris collected at the inactive Calgary base rather than the currently active base in Edmonton, where the satellite crashed. It couldn't possibly be because of its closer proximity to the United States. Absolutely not. There are safety and logistical considerations. The quarantine is a joke. Personnel have been repeatedly spotted going in and out of the quarantine zone. I read at least half a dozen accounts that confirm that. Supplies need to be delivered and waste removed from the site. Why are and medical safety supplies measures being are taken? delivered to the base? Sir, I can't... Why are medical supplies being delivered to the base? I can't possibly comment Witnesses on things Witnesses have that... seen deliveries from Calgary General. I can't and comment no on... And no one, no one can tell us why. Sir. The station Montana quarantine lasted for 36 hours. Mr. Montana, And the only explanation I... for this quarantine lasting as long as it has is that we're trying to keep secrets from yes, getting Mr. out. Mr. Montag, please give Mr. Collins a chance to speak. Thank you, Deirdre. I'd caution you, Mr. Montag, on making dangerous and baseless allegations. By Mr. Montag's own admission, he's not an expert on these issues, but that doesn't stop him from speaking as though he is. A week and a half ago, we were dealing with an emergency situation, the size and the details of which were yet to be known, and our men and women acted accordingly and properly and within the bounds of the law. Well, there was the a request made to our Montana office, and our agents responded to it. The Canadian government is behaving responsibly, the way it should when lives are at risk. Or when to use America... this as an opportunity to stir up anti-American sentiment and sell more newspapers or blogs or what have you is quite frankly inappropriate and counterproductive. When things fall out of the sky, Mr. Montag, they don't care about borders or sovereignty. The danger is indiscriminate. Well, Mr. And it Collins... is precisely because of the relationship between Canada and the United States that we were able to respond as quickly and effectively as we did. I can't believe I'm that you have I'm afraid that's going to have call. to be the last word for right now so that we can go to commercial. But I do hope you both will stay with us so that we can continue this 
spirited debate after the break. We did good on that thing, but we're still getting our asses kicked in the press. Yes, we are. And when we're done here, bang some heads together and let's come up with some new talking points. Those internet assholes are amazing. Where's the, um... Uh... Okay, how long has he been in there? About 20 minutes, sir. Ah, wonderful. Mr. Ambassador, apologies for the wait. I am waiting for Secretary Miller. You sent me. I do not know you. Eric McClellan, I'm one of Secretary Miller's deputies. Deputies, I wish to deal directly with Secretary Miller. I've been made the point man in this matter. My authority comes directly from Secretary Miller and the President of the United States. I'm the guy you want to talk to. Very well. So, Mr. Ambassador, what isn't your government telling us? What are we not telling you? Something fell out of the sky and spread radiation over my country. We believe... No. We know it was Soviet hardware. What can you tell us about that? Please, Mr. Secretary, you speak to me like I am your enemy. The Cold War is over. I seem to recall ten of your spies turning up in New Jersey not too long ago. Or were we to assume they just didn't get that memo? Mr. McClellan. As your president says, let us cut bullshit, yes? Let's. We believe, no. We know that you are holding one or more of our cosmonauts. Sorry, Mr. Ambassador. I may have misunderstood your accent. Did you say cosmonauts? Yes, that is what I have said, and you understand me fine. Can we agree that story of satellite was a lie? I wouldn't categorize it that way. Forgive me. Sometimes my English fails me, but when you Say something that is not truth. You call it a lie, yes? It wasn't a lie. Do most satellites have people inside of them? If you lost cosmonauts, why didn't the Russian Space Agency contact us? Surely you know when you lose people. These cosmonauts were lost a long time ago. We insist they be returned to us immediately. Mr. Ambassador, I, I don't understand. What were these cosmonauts doing? Where did they come from? And why did they crash in my backyard? They have come. from faraway place. And what faraway place would that be? Mr. Ambassador, as your president says, no bullshit. Here we are, this little blue one right here. But you already know what that looks like because you've seen it from far away. Can you pick out home, Mars on the map? This one. Do. Это то, что в твоем сердце. Do. Это то, что в твоем сердце. Do. Это то, что в твоем сердце. Do. Это то, что by whom Sertze. She's made a real connection with him, I think. He only talks to her. What's he saying now? He's not making much sense. I keep hearing one word, though. Home. This has to happen faster. I'm not getting anywhere. Enough with the bedtime stories. I don't think this is the kind of thing you can force, Tom. Are you all right? Hmm? 
Are you all right? I'm tired. One more week. Did you see that? He couldn't even bring himself to say it. It's so goddamn absurd. How do they know we're holding a suspect? They don't. They don't know what we got. They think we got multiple guys, but we only have that one. Well, what do you think he's holding back? They don't want us to think that they're not in control of their own military. They know as well as we do that they've been hemorrhaging hardware and uranium since 91. The thing that I don't understand is why they're still giving us this Mars crap. Well, he never actually said anything about Mars. Because he doesn't want to sound like an idiot. But if that's the game we're playing, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but um, suppose this guy actually did come back from Mars. How do we cover ourselves? Hypothetically. He might not technically be a Russian citizen. He speaks. What do you mean? Well, if he came from Mars, what country is that? He'd literally be from another planet. But it's a Soviet spacecraft. That's Soviet territory. But there is no Soviet Union. Weren't Soviet citizens living in Russia granted Russian citizenship? I'm sure there's some technicality we can exploit. I mean, we don't even know anything about his parents. That's true. So he's a non-person, is that what we're saying? That works for now. Look into Russian naturalization laws, but don't spend too much time on it. Yes, sir. I'll update Miller's office. Yeah, you do that. No, wait. Brief Jacobs first, then Miller. Jacobs? At the White House? I believe that's where he works, yes. You know we're going to catch six kinds of hell from Miller's people for going around them. But not from Miller himself. I, I've got a hunch. Just do it, yeah? Yes, sir. Oh, and put in a call to Taylor and our friends up north. I want to know if that kid's been saying anything yet. Thank you. Don't. No, that's not very good. Sorry we haven't been able to get more time off the base under a lot of media scrutiny right now. I understand. You don't seem to mind very much. I guess I'm enjoying the work. It's nice to feel like I'm making a difference for somebody. You care about him. I do. What's going to happen to him when the quarantine is over? That's part of why I wanted to talk to you today. You've been doing great so far. He's really responding to you being there, but we're not moving fast enough. Fast enough. Is there anything you've noticed that's not in the transcripts? Anything? I'm not sure what you mean. I need workable information. Well, there have been a few times when I've spoken to him in English and he responded like he understood me. He understands English. I'm pretty sure, yeah. But he only speaks to you in Russian. Well, just because he understands English doesn't mean he can speak it. Or he doesn't want to. Why wouldn't he want to? Depending on what he's been told, he may think he's behind enemy lines. He may have been given instructions not to speak. Or he's just scared. I'd rather hear that from him. Well, I don't know what else I can do. I need to be able to talk to him. I need him to answer questions. I don't know if that's realistic right now. There must be some way to take advantage of the relationship you have with him. I don't think I'm comfortable with that. The more information we have, the better off we'll be. You mean the better off you'll be, don't you? The better off he'll be. I'm sorry. I just care about him, that's all. My job is about finding out the truth. And as long as you're in this building, you work for me. I know. Good. See what you can get from him. And we can all go home. He can't. Yeah. What? Can I come in? Yeah. What do you got for me? Can I sit? Yeah. There's this wacko on the outside making a lot of noise, a Dr. Richard Hadfield. He's some kind of conspiracy nutcase. And? Well, I think he's called up every report I can think of trying to get somebody's attention. He thinks we've got the Andromeda strain in here. I think he's got a book coming out. Is anyone taking him seriously? No. Just thought you'd get a kick out of that. You have to close the door to tell me that. No. Can you tell me why you're really here, then? 
This is a rather uncomfortable situation for me, but I had to ask what? something. Is it possible that you and Captain Benton could have been seen leaving the base? Why? There's a report floating around that a witness saw two men matching your descriptions in a car trailing one of the supply trucks. When was this? I don't know, a few days ago. Is it true? It's an urgent matter that required my attention. That's all you need to know. When something like this comes up, I do need to know or I can't do my job. We have to at least appear like we're taking this quarantine seriously. No, it handle. I am. Was there something else? We've got a problem. This program has received exclusive information that one of the people brought into the quarantine zone is this man, Dr. Zachary Walzer, adjunct professor at the University of Washington and an outspoken advocate for human Mars exploration. Joining us in studio is Dr. Avery Frank, former colleague of Dr. Walzer's, to discuss what this may mean. Thank you for taking the time, Doctor. Glad to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with Dr. Walzer and why a man with his credentials might be brought in to consult in this investigation? Sure, I worked with Zachary for about four years in the 80s when we were both at JPL. The Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena? Uh, yes, just outside Pasadena in California. We were working on the development of a new propulsion system to be used in unmanned probes eventually with manned spacecraft that would be used to explore the solar system. Uh, Dr. Walzer has a background in nuclear engineering, and I imagine that's why he's involved in this situation. Yeah, I'd like to talk a little bit about his advocacy for Mars exploration. Is it fair to say that he has achieved notoriety within the scientific community for his work on the subject? Yes, definitely. From time to time, I've heard him referred to as, uh, reverently, of course, uh, the man from Mars. Do you feel that his Mars work has overshadowed his other accomplishments? I wouldn't say overshadowed, but certainly that's the direction he's moved in since I knew him, sure. But he's known as a Mars expert, the Mars expert. I'm sure some of his colleagues would take issue with that, but it I'd seems say that's... strange that he would be the nuclear engineer called in to consult in this matter. Do you agree? I can't say. Surely there are other scientists, perhaps even some on the payroll of the United States government, who are just as qualified in nuclear engineering. I would think so. So it stands to reason that it's his Mars expertise that distinguished him from the rest. I'm not sure I understand where you're going with this. What I'm trying to get at here is, why would a Mars expert be brought in to investigate the crash of a Soviet satellite, which, as far as we've been told, has nothing to do with Mars? I'm not in a position to speculate. An ageless design. Crafted by some of the most modern technology in the field. And for the first time, available to you. The Pioneer One T-shirt. Support the show by getting it and other fine merchandise at pioneerone.tv. Made possible by Hacker Threads. The Outer Space Treaty of 1967. No celestial body may be subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty by means of use or occupation. In other words, even if the Soviets had been there, they couldn't claim it as their territory. The rescue agreement elaborating on the provisions of Article 5 of said treaty, any state that is a party to the agreement must provide all possible assistance to rescue the personnel of a spacecraft who have landed within that state's territory. The state where the object lands is required, upon request of the launching authority, to recover the object and returning. This is all starting to make sense to me now. If they say they lost a spacecraft and a cosmonaut, we are bound by international law to turn them over. So it sounds like if we maintain our position that we're holding a terrorist suspect and his uh, weapon of mass destruction, we should be okay. I still don't understand this Mars stuff, though. Couldn't they come up with something more believable? Turn the page. The Registration Convention. The convention requires that every nation furnish notice and details regarding every orbiting space object. So by saying it's for Mars, we can't catch them on that. <laughs> Unbelievable. What about a citizenship thing? Well, the parent's citizenship would have turned over in 91, and he'd have citizenship by birth. 
We don't want anything for sure about the parents. So I think we're okay. So where do you think we are on this? I think it's pretty thin, but I think we have enough cover if that's the story they're giving us. Maybe, assuming I can keep a straight face in there. <laughs> yes, sir. No, really, I don't want any more talk of Mars in this office. Come in. He's waiting for you, sir. <sighs> I'll be right there. Uh, good job on this, by the way. Thank you, sir. Where'd you get all this? Wikipedia. Okay, next time I'd rather you make something up. Yes, Mr. Secretary. And the Canadian Foreign Secretary is still trying to get a few minutes with you. One pain in the ass at a time. I assure you, Mr. Ambassador, we are not holding any citizen of the Russian or former Soviet government. And this is official position of United States government? It is. But you are holding someone, yes? This is an investigation of a possible terrorist act. We are holding a suspect, but considering him an enemy combatant. Unless you're telling me he's a Russian citizen. I am not a fool. Do not talk to me like one. If you've caught a terrorist, then why is foremost expert on subject of space travel to planet Mars assisting in your investigation? I'm afraid I don't understand what you mean. No, we see the same news you do. CNN makes it even to Moscow. Don't believe everything you see on television. Then you deny this. We'll have to get back to you on that. You brought a civilian in on this without telling me? I believe I do have that authority. But I told you not to pursue this particular line of inquiry. At the time, I thought it was prudent not to discount anything. Well, your prudence just made me look like a fool with the Russian ambassador. Did somebody leak this from your end? We're looking into it. What are the Russians saying? They're giving us the same story, but I don't think even they believe it. Why would they do that? They are obviously complicit in this. Either they were involved or they know who was. The Mars story is their cover and it started to stick. As hard as that is to believe. The bigger the lie, as they say. So you're not prepared to consider the Mars story at all? I think I've made myself very clear. Haven't we been through this once before? I have to ask. I have no idea how anybody knows I'm here. What does it matter? Your background? Well, people are starting to put the pieces together. That's a bad thing. It's going to get out sooner or later. If we can't control the flow of information, it may affect our diplomatic efforts with the Russians. We're talking to the Russians? What are they saying? Can't get into details. Why does everything have to be such a big secret with you people? If we could just share what we know, we'd be so much further along. Do you even have any idea how long it's been since I've used a microscope? I barely know what I'm doing here. What are you doing here exactly? Well, this is water from the recycling system in Yuri's capsule. I'm checking to see if it contains any trace elements that might suggest it came from the Martian permafrost or somewhere else on the surface. A crew of three or more couldn't have survived for long on the surface without finding a new water source. How's it going? Well, considering it's been about a hundred years since I took a chemistry lab, not that good. If I could just consult with some of my colleagues or bring Can't in someone Can't do it, doctor. To... I'm in enough trouble for bringing you here in the first place. Quarantine is the only reason you're not on a plane back home. Well, it's nice to know I'm welcome. Anything? Well... All I can tell you for sure is that wasn't me. I just talked to Walzer. He says he hasn't told anybody. Could one of the protesters have recognized him when we first brought him in? <laughs> I doubt it. People didn't start showing up till after the press conference. And even if he was seen, do you think he'd be recognized? No, probably not. Just got off the phone with McClellan. He's not happy. <laughs> Should we have Walzer make a statement or something? No, we looked like we got spooked if we respond directly. Any other ideas? We could shine a light on it. You got something in mind? Maybe. Good. Go do what you do. Hey, it's Glenn Vernon. Listen, I've got a guy that I think might be a good fit for your show. Now, the Earth is 70%, over 70% water. And we're supposed to believe this was an accident. We are under attack here, folks. See, see, this is what happens when you put a Democrat in the White House. We are not safe here, folks. The sky's literally falling on top of us. And that's Mr. Dix, taking a page out of the chicken little playbook, uh, apparently using this crash to justifiably foment mass hysteria among the electorate. And uh, I do believe that this would put Mr. Dix in the title role of chicken little himself, which is a particularly interesting strategy considering 
that nothing ever fell down when his guy was in office. Aww. What? They like that one in rehearsal. But the big news of the day is the revelation that Dr. Zachary Walser, the outspoken Mars expert, was secretly brought in to investigate the satellite crash in Canada. This has brought about wild speculation in the media, and now joining us with more wild speculation is Dr. Richard Hadfield. Now you're a doctor of what exactly now? Astrobiology. Which is? The study of life outside of the Earth. The life outside the Earth. So, uh, little green men, is that what we're talking about here? More like little green germs. What? Sir, there's a guy on TV I think you should see. Now, you've heard about them bringing in this Mars guy, this expert? And Dr. Walter, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Mars guy. Now, um, what do you make of that? I think it's obvious to anyone who's been paying attention. Give me a category on the line. No. Well, let's use our imagination. Let's pretend for a second that uh, I have not been paying attention. What have I, Joe Sixpack, John Q. Citizen, uh, what have I missed here? The pieces are there if you look for them. Why bring an expert in on Mars unless you're dealing with something that had come from Mars? Something that had come from Mars? Yes. So, what are you saying? Are you saying that they've got this aliens This guy doesn't in sound like that oh, much no, of a nut job. Not. I think so ridiculous. Right. That would be ridiculous. I'm sure. Put the pieces together. Follow the evidence. Most people don't do that. What pieces? You have debris from a crashed satellite. That wreckage has been quarantined. Medical equipment has been being taken to the base by eyewitnesses and an expert on Mars consulting on the investigation. What do these things tell you? Space aliens. <laughs> no. We know there is no such thing. Does this guy actually know something? Because he sounds like he might know something. How many leaks does this fucking ship have? No, 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 no. Maybe you haven't been paying attention to the pieces that the regular people, like me, you... I believe a probe sent to the planet Mars has brought back some kind of contaminant, some form of microbial life. Perhaps even a bacteria or a virus. The quarantine is in place to prevent exposing it to our biosphere, which could unleash a Martian plague and wipe out the entire human race. Dude. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> Never mind. That was good. Now somebody hears anybody talk about Mars. Now think of this wacko. You've earned your paycheck for the week. I was worried for a second there. Yeah, me too. Bye. Ready to lay. Honey, she Thanks, man. Скучаешь, Пани? Я скучаю по миру. Ты одинок? Кто такой одинок? Один человек. Нет людей. Ты один. Да, я один. Нет, ты не один. I'm here with you, but they need you to start talking. They have questions, lots of questions, and they need you to tell them things. I want to stay with you. But they won't let me if you don't answer their questions. Do you understand? I'll go away. They'll make me go away. Do you want me to stay? Did you hear the news? 
Yeah, we're into good with that Hatfield That's guy. That's not what I'm talking about. What now? Secretary Miller has stepped down. Really? Yeah. Who's running Homeland? One guess. Think he was angling for this all along? I don't think I'm that cynical. Exactly that cynical. He has been chosen to replace Mr. Miller as the head of Homeland Security. It has been confirmed that Secretary Miller has stepped down. There is speculation due to sharp criticism from the right concerning the ongoing situation in Calgary, but the White House denies any connection. Assistant Secretary Eric McClellan has been chosen to replace Mr. Miller as the head of Homeland Security. Again, it has been confirmed that... Did you tell anyone I was here? It's all over the news. I haven't told anyone else. It doesn't matter now, but you can't call me here. If I need anything else, I'll call you. Yes, it was very helpful. Thank you, but listen to what I'm saying. You can't call. I'll call you if I need anything. I will. That's not a good idea. No, that's not a good idea right now. Okay, bye. So, you just watched episode four of Pioneer One, and uh, as you can see, things are heating up. In the next upcoming episodes, um, there are a lot of changes. There's a dramatic change that happens in my character, Tom Taylor. Suddenly, things become more important than just being right. When I read five, uh, it was like a, a kick in the head. Lots of cool stuff happens in the next couple of episodes. It was like a horse rearing up and in, in, in giving me a swift kick with all four hoops. The whole thing takes a, a really crazy turn. Well, I don't think a horse could do that. Episode six um, is a complete shift. They have the opportunity to be more ballsy than Network Series. You get the sense at the end of the, the last episode that this whole incident at Calgary is just the first part of a much bigger story. I think you're gonna really like the plot twists in episodes five and six. Wait till you get to episode six. Just wait. Get ready and keep watching.